So a father murdered himself or murdered his family and then killed himself. This is in Australia. This is Hannah Clark's story and uh, actually her parents, really. So um, I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, this is tragic. I mean, there was a, a, a wife, a whole family, the three kids and the wife that were been abused in so many ways for so very long. And um, and then the, the parents, her parents, are just left with this gaping void. And uh, a viewer, uh, Nicole Gilroy, had asked quite some time ago, actually, if I would see if there's a message for the parents. And that's what we'll do. Okay, so Hannah Clark was Australian and fatally burned in her car with her three kids in a quadruple murder-suicide by her estranged husband, Rowan Baxter, on the 19th of February, 2020, in Camp Hill, uh, Queensland. Uh, he had a history of violence, misogyny, and domestic, and uh, had a domestic violence order, a DVO, uh, the very month of the murders. Now, Hannah was nine, when they met, Hannah was 19 years old and he was 30, and he was a has-been uh, rugby league player when they first got together. The three kids were Alea, six, Liana, four, and Trey, three. Hannah was emotionally, physically, sexually, and financially abused. He kidnapped four-year-old Leanna on Boxing Day, and he had that DVO on him, but the Holland Park Magistrate's Court uh, returned full access to the kids, which was again revoked when he breached the DVO. Then, while dropping them at school, he set fire to the interior of the car with him, Hannah, and the kids, quickly killing the kids. Hannah made it out and told witnesses he'd poured petrol on her. While the car was burning, he stopped bystanders from putting out the fire and stabbed himself to death. Hannah died in the hospital that evening with burns to 97% of her body. Now, her parents, the tearful grandparents, Sue and Lloyd Clark, Hannah's mom and dad, uh, said they would ask the killer why. The children would say, Daddy, why would you hurt us, take away our futures? Why didn't you just love us like a father's supposed to? Hannah would say, why couldn't you be a better man, father, husband? Why be a coward, a bully, and bully us for so many years? Bravely, the grandfather said, society must ask why this happens. Why does it take murdering four beautiful souls plus dozens of others years before government responds? Their granddaughter's room is unchanged. Uh, grandma can't bring herself to pack up their toys. The house, once filled with noise, laughter, and chaos, is now quiet. Holidays, Christmas, Mother's Day are unbearable. The gaping hole will never be filled. The day before the murders, the daddy carefully shopped for a fuel can, plastic zip ties, and a container of surface cleaner. So it sounds like he expected to survive whatever he was going to do. The next morning, he bought fuel, lollies, and three kinder surprises at the gas station, I guess for the kids. Weeks before the murders, a psychologist wrote a glowing letter for the father. She had no concerns about his mental health, although having treated him for just six sessions and later agreed he was a high risk of harming others. And she was also aware that he was trying to create evidence to regain the kids. Um, she did not detail this in her notes, but instead wrote a favorable reference and afterwards provided police a statement that he was level headed and low risk. Counsel assisting the coroner said his calculated premeditated murder demonstrated evil. His murderous intent was just a matter of time. Hannah's family, her parents, established a foundation named Small Steps for Hannah to honor the children and put a halt to domestic violence in Australia. And the viewers asked if there's a message of comfort in the cards for these uh, grandparents. So that's what we'll look at now. Okay, so this one is uh, pretty sad. And uh, Nicole Gilroy, thank you for asking the question. And Nicole wants to know, is there a message of comfort 
uh, or support for uh, Hannah, the mother, for her parents. So that's, uh, we're going to use this Jungian tarot, which is a kind of a psychological uh, uh, Jungian, as I've been corrected. Not Jungian, but Jungian tarot, and that's uh, the correct pronunciation. Uh, but uh, before I get started with that, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to just um, thumb through the deck because they are a little difficult to um, interpret. And I want to make sure that I remember uh, what cards or what. So I'm just going to take a moment. So this is a king because he's a, thr a throne behind him. So that's uh, good to remember. This one, I'm going to think, is a knight. And again, this will just be another. This is a queen because there's a throne. Uh, oh boy, this is going to be difficult to remember. I have to look that one up if it comes across. Uh, this would be a knight. Okay, let's see here. I'll just have to, you know, if I get stuck on some of these, I'm just going to have to uh, open the booklet, which I have right here, and let it help me out. So I'm not going to be shy about that. So what I need to do now is identify which is a page when it comes up. So we'll just go through these quickly. Again, this would probably be a page, I'm going to guess. Yeah. So let's see how this works out. We'll just thumb through them and I'll get familiar with them. Hope you don't mind there while I do my homework. Um, so, yeah, so this, so the females are the pages. There you go. It'd be like the princesses. This is a king. Yep. Okay, I've got that. The major kind of cards. I may have some problem. That's a king. I mean, that's a. This would be a knight. Yep. And this would be a page. Okay. I think I'm on uh, the track now. Uh, there are some cards in here that I don't uh, remember what they are right away. And if I have to uh, use the booklet, I will. And um, so here we go. So now, let's get these shoveled up a little bit. Yeah. This is. Um, just a horrible situation. Um, this fellow premeditated, he planned the murder of his own family, he even bought cleaning liquid afterwards because I don't think he originally intended uh, to go with them. My God, I bought the kids lollipops and, and kinder surprises. What in the world is wrong with people? How do people get uh, to that state in their life that this seems like the right thing to do? I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. So we had a minute to go through the deck, and uh, now we'll do a little bit of meditation. Okay. Just in my mind, uh, asking uh, Archangel Michael for little protection from anything evil and I have a special saint that helps me uh, with some direction so I'm throwing out some vibes there and also some members of my family who passed um, are important to me and that helps me a little bit but uh, we'll get into the question um, you know I'm not going to say how many cards we'll pull because it might be a full Celtic cross um, but it may not and so we're looking for support for Hannah's grandparents support a message of support for Hannah's grandparents that's what we want to have here and I'm going to, it may take a little bit longer to uh, shuffle uh, than I have than I do usually just because this is pretty important message of support for Hannah Clark's uh, parents actually a message of support for Hannah Clark's parents let's see how this works out. Okay, six cards. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, so please bear with me if I have to use this little uh, cheat sheet here for some of these cards. If you don't use the same cards every single day, I mean, it just does get away from you what certain cards mean. So the signifier looking for message of support for Hannah's parents. The signifier card in this is the one, two, three, four, five of Pentacles. And the five of Pentacles is being uh, felt uh, that you're left out in the cold. Certainly appropriate. Okay. 
The challenge to that then, message of support, support for Hannah's uh, parents, is this five of swords, and of course that's an abuse of power. So, so far we're right on track. So being left out of coal is uh, being challenged by this abuse of power. Being left out of the cold, that abuse of power is what put them out in the cold. Message of support is what we're looking for. The base of this reading then is the Six of Cups. And sadly, the Six of Cups is, um, you know, remembering how things were at a better time, an earlier time, when things were the way they should be. This is uh, Cups of Compassion. And uh, by the way, uh, swords are uh, truth, justice, rules, and law. And that was an abuse of that. And pentacles, of course, are worth. So the base of this whole thing is uh, the very fact, that probably, that uh, they can't get out of their mind, I presume, uh, remembering the way things were. Looking for a message of support for um, Hannah Clark's parents. The past of this reading is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of wands. Well, the seven of wands is an interesting card to get for the past because this is defending yourself against other actions. Uh, it's typically depicted in a typical Rider Waite deck as six wands kind of poking up over a cliffside and then the person on top of the cliff has one wand that they're fending off uh, those uh, other wands with. So in the past of this was really having to fend off uh, some actions against you. Looking for a message of support for uh, Hannah Clark's uh, parents. In the sky of this reading with this Six of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, drawing a blank on that one, um, is going to be, oh yeah. So the Six of Pentacles up in the sky, well this is perfect actually because they have established that fund uh, to uh, help um, eliminate uh, domestic violence. And the Six of Pentacles is typically uh, depicted in the uh, Rider Waite deck as someone who's doling out the worth uh, you get this, you get that, you know, okay, so that's absolutely appropriate. And so, so far, this message is that uh, they're going to find relief um, for their heart uh, through that association that they've established, doling out the value that comes in to those uh, that need it. Interesting. The likely outcome of this first part of this, looking for a message for Hannah Clark's parents, is another six. And uh, this is a six of wands. Six, I don't want to six of wands. So the six of wands is um, uh, victory. <laughs> so that's that's that is hopeful. As a matter of fact, this uh, tells me that uh, the likely outcome of all of this is there will be victory uh, in the uh, in the help that they're trying to establish for people that find themselves in a similar situation to what their daughter had found herself in. Well, let's go ahead and do the last four cards just to see if uh, there's some more um, message here. Well, that's beautiful so far. Okay. I'm gonna cut this in two, um, each stack representing one of the two uh, parents uh, of Hannah. Okay, so the last four cards here the self of that question, is there a message of support for Hannah's parents? Ah, this is the king of swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. You will, you will be the ones that bring this about, or certainly help. The environment that that's in is uh, being tied to lesser intentions. Of course it is. Uh, all this is the devil card. So the, the king of truth, justice, rules, and law, of course, is in the environment of this uh, horrific uh, uh, situation that, that uh, women and children find themselves in, and perhaps men too if they have an abusive uh, spouse, um, of uh, being tied to lesser intention, the devil's work. That's very appropriate as a matter of fact. Really, it's almost scary sometimes how accurately the cards uh, come out uh, for a question. Uh, the hopes and the fears of all of this, message for uh, Hannah Clark's parents. Okay, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of swords. End of a cycle. Yeah, the hopes is that we find, we put an end to this cycle of violence. And then the final outcome, a message of hope for Hannah Clark's parents, is this page of cups. 
And, uh, you know, the page is the least um, uh, powerful of the court cards. And cups are emotion and compassion and love. And so the final outcome is that a message of compassion and love and caring does come out of the work of these uh, parents. So let's read it all again. So uh, Nicole is looking for uh, a message of compassion for the grandparents, or I'm sorry, for the parents of Hannah Clark. I keep thinking of the kids, so I keep thinking of them as grandparents. Uh, the signifier card uh, coming out of that was this five of pentacles, which is being left out in the cold, exactly where they were, their daughter and their grandkids gone, and uh, not much help, not much help from the legal system. It's uh, challenged by this five of swords, that abuse of power uh, that uh, these families find themselves in. Uh, the basis of the whole thing is with this six of cups is remembering how things were. The past of this reading with this uh, seven of um, wands is a uh, fighting against uh, these uh, actions, uh, but you'll be victorious. And then the sky of this, with this Six of Pentacles uh, up in the sky, is um, distributing that wealth from that organization, I presume, that they've established. And then the likely outcome of this first part with the Six of Wands is victory, which is great. Uh, the very self of that question is becoming the king of truth, justice, rules, and law, and obviously in the environment of the devil. And then with this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of swords, the hopes and the fears is that there is an end to these cycles. And uh, with the final outcome of the whole thing with this page of cups is uh, it brings it will bring forth a message of compassion uh, for all of these uh, issues. So that's beautiful. Well, no matter how the cards come out, there's no way that this can be a pleasant uh, end. I just hope that um, I was careful with the reading and uh, let me know what you think about that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards okay, now. Okay, so this is the Jungian Tarot, tarot uh, by Robert Wang. And so, very interesting uh, set of cards. So, the box. I always like to start with that. It's a nice, sturdy box. It's like a box that maybe perfume would come in. It's kind of that quality. And um, it's got an interesting story about these. Uh, Robert Wang developed the Jungian Tarot as a visual gateway into the complexities of Jungian psychology uh, to aid in the process of active imagination uh, proposed by Carl Jung in the 22 Major Arcana uh, represent Jungian archetypes of the collective unconscious. So it's interesting. So these um, Carl Jung actually developed these cards for use in psychoanalysis. Uh, the the so everything about them is very very thoughtful. Um, the uh, booklet is good. It talks a little bit here, and I'll just tell you quickly. Um, the Jungian tarot, tarot is a set of arch, uh, archetypical uh, images carefully uh, designed for use in a process which Carl Jung, one of the founders of the psychoanalytic uh, movement, called active imagination. It's hoped that the readers will find in these pictures a comfortable visual introduction to the principle of Jungian psychology and that they will be encouraged to seriously consider Dr. Jung's brilliant summation of the Western uh, uh, mystery tradition and his translation of, of its ideas into modern psychological terms. And what's interesting here is that the last part of this said I like this. It says, in this regard, it should be understood that most current accepted systems of value assignment for, for regular tarot cards were arbitrarily developed by 19th century occult groups. I take, uh, I don't know about arbitrarily developed, but by 19th century occult groups, by contrast, the attributes to the Jungian tarot have been painstakingly researched in an effort to clearly relate tarot interpretation to the more ancient and traditional study of astrology and of the uh, Hermetic Kabbalah. So, I like it. And then the interpretations in, in here are very good, and they're in keeping with the typical uh, writer weight uh, interpretations, so you can fall back on that. The cards are a really good uh, stock of cards, and they're, uh, it, they have an interesting back. It's a, uh, they feature a lot of the cards on the back here. Um, they fit into your hands really well, uh, and uh, they work really well. So the one thing, I won't say that they're completely... Like you, they're, they're completely um, easy to interpret. Just because the uh, pr uh, val <laughs> the page, the knight, the king, and the queen are not clear to uh, interpret. Um, just because it's not clear that the queen is a queen and the king is a king, and the page. This is a page, for instance. So you might think, oh well, that's a queen, but no, it's not. So you have to figure that part of them out. And there's a couple other cards that are a little less um, intuitive to uh, figure out, but it's interesting to use these cards. And I use them when I've got a particularly um, psychological subject 
that I want to delve into. So I don't use them awfully that much, really, and I should, uh, because they work very well. It's surprising the interpretations you get out of these. So lots of thought was gone into Carl Jung's design of these cards. Uh, lots of thought was gone into Robert Wang uh, putting them into a tarot set. And uh, so here we go. They're, they're well worth uh, the uh, time and money, especially if you understand your uh, uh, Rider weight system of tarot. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.